Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and my craft table. So glad you could join me and welcome if you're new. So today I have three very easy Halloween crafts for you today. So we've got another Halloween video and let's go ahead and just hop right down to the craft table and get those started. Okay, for my first craft of the day, I am going to basically cover this wood pumpkin with a plaid paper. Now this is a seamless pattern that I got out of Creative Fabrica, downloaded to my computer. I uploaded it to Cricut Design Space and put it in as a pattern fill and just made a big square. Now for print thin cut, you can only print, um, I think 7.38 by 7.38. So this is definitely not quite wide enough. So I took this piece over here and I cut it so that it would fit in over here. And this will actually get the job done. It'll cover everything that we need it to cover. And so I think we're gonna be just fine. So this is actually from the Dollar Tree and it had some kind of cardboard thing here that I took off. And this is just some sort of sticker that eventually I will take off of this side so for time's sake, I'm actually just using this side of the pumpkin. And I'm going to just cover this with some Mod Podge. And then we will stick the pumpkin down and let it dry. And then we will trim off all of the excess that's going around the perimeter. So I'm just gonna get this nice and brushed on here. And I just used regular copy paper out of my computer, um, you know, my printer. Uh, if you have scrapbook paper, this would be a great use of patterned scrapbook paper. So I am really just coming along here and putting this good layer on here. Okay, so we're done with that in particular. I'm going to turn my paper over and this is how I know how big it is. So I, I had put the pumpkin down in the orientation that I needed it and I traced around it and literally I just needed a sliver. And so I just grabbed it from over here and matched the pattern on the front. So this time I'm going to just take my pattern paper and I'm just going to fit the pumpkin back down here in this space. And I've got a little bit of a lip and this is going to be just fine. So now I'm going to just use my brayer and I'm going to adhere this down with my brayer really well. I want to make sure there's no wrinkles. And then once this dries, and we will cut all of this off and you can actually always mod podge on top of this all right this one is ready to kind of dry and i'm going to set it to the side then we'll get started on craft number two okay so for craft number two i'm actually going to take this jar that's right here and i'm going to put a little bit of a candy sentiment i'm going to take some rubbing alcohol and just clean off that side of the jar for good. And as well as the rest, just so I, all the fingerprints are off. But this side in particular, there we go. And this is just a jar that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. Now something, um, as far as that bottom sticker and the sticker that was on the pumpkin, I like to use this Goo Gone glue and tape remover. And that's what that little spot was that you saw on the pumpkin. But basically, I just stick this, I dab it on there really well, coat it really good, and I just let it sit for like five minutes. And then literally, you could just peel off those stickers from the store like nobody's business. Okay, now that's my Easy Press Mini because we will be doing an iron-on craft here in just a moment. So what I have here is I have a little SVG and it says candy collector. And I did forget to pull out these um, middles of the O. Okay, we've got 
one there. And actually, that is, quite frankly, I was missing some dots from earlier when I weeded it. So now I can replace the two missing dots with these dots from the O. That was perfect. The next thing I'm going to do is, this was an entirely black SVG, and I duplicated it two additional times, and then I hid, I went to the contour menu, and I hid everything but this heart. And then I turned this heart red, and that way I can just stick it right back down here on a, like a sticker. Then I have this little pumpkin. My thought was, can I put this down? Okay, everybody hold your breath. See if we can do it. Yes. Okay. So we were able to put that down. And I got to put this little stem back. All right. So what I did is I duplicated it the second time. And I hid everything except for the jack-o'-lantern. And on the jack-o'-lantern, I hid the face. And in on the main one, I hid the heart and I hid that pumpkin part of the jack-o'-lantern, leaving the face. So nice little contour um, job there. And I do have a video on how to contour, so I can link that for you. This SVG, so this is from Cricut Design Space, and I can totally link this in the description for you. I need to use Cricut Transfer Tape. I, I think that since they've changed their formula and done the new, um, the new batches of just, you know, adhesive vinyl, and I got a sampler of it, um, I actually am only successful when I use Cricut Transfer Tape, which is fine. Normally, my transfer tape choices weren't really an issue, didn't matter, but I'm, I'm thinking that on my Cricut brand vinyls, maybe I do need to use their transfer tape, so I'm kind of experimenting because I actually have all kinds of transfer tape that I like to use, and I think the trick is really burnishing down the back, pushing it into that transfer tape, and this is a piece that I used on an earlier project. So I'm hoping I can manage this without too much trouble. Looks like I need to fix the eyes of my jack-o'-lantern. This particular eye, I need to literally turn it all the way. Well, I need to turn it. 90 degrees because it is totally cattywampus. Okay, so this O and this T definitely are being a little bit ornery today, which is fine. We will get it. Um, apparently this vinyl does not realize that I have been alive and stubborn a whole lot longer than it has existed. So let's see how good of a job I did. I'm just gonna go like this. Okay, so everything looks good except for one of my jack-o'-lantern eyes. I just need to kind of move it over ever so slightly. Okay, I think that's as good as it's gonna get. So you can kind of see that there. Everything's in its place. I'm gonna bring this back over. And then we're just gonna put this on here. And I thought this was so fun. You can just put some candy in it. Um, you could give this as a gift to somebody. You could make some teacher appreciation gifts. You could um, put candy on your desk at work or your, your craft room. And I just thought it would be super fun. And the good thing is, is everything will stay on the glass where it should be. So that's a win. There it is. Let's see. Here we go. Oops, sorry for that glare. All right, that's a cute little candy jar and you could make it for yourself or a gift and it's just super sweet. All right, let's move on to craft number three. 
Okay, so craft number three is just a little tote bag that came from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna be using my Easy Press Mini to put a little trick or treat uh, motif on it. And I am using iron on um, black, and then I'm using some colored iron on or glitter iron on in colors. Super fun. First of all, let me iron out these wrinkles and moisture, etc. All right. I actually had a fourth craft that I was going to do in this video, but I think either it'll just not get done or if I come up with any more Halloween stuff, then I can do it later um, unless I just move on to fall. I've kind of been going back and forth between fall and Halloween. This was an amazing SVG and I don't know if I need to change my blade or better yet, use glitter iron on because this is pretty intricate and yeah this did not work out so that's okay i've got plenty of vinyl and i think i might try it again later with um with uh, iron on vinyl because that seems to work really well with our intricate designs so i'm not worried about it i figured three was plenty so a lot of times I will do that with my intricate um, designs or things that I think might not weed very well or um, I just use the, the iron on. That particular SVG is one that would probably cut so much better had I used the iron on. And so I'll give that a thought. I am trying to get a lot of crafting done over the next few weeks before I have to pack up my little craft space. And this is just black iron-on, not glitter, um, which is my favorite, um, the Caesar black glitter iron-on. Oh, that is my favorite. If you've been around my channel for even a hot minute, you know how I love that black glitter. This just says trick or treat and it has some bats and it has some little cute little spiders and I just thought that um it would be a cute little bag. My daughter, she's so cute. I I asked her if she if I could make her like a little trick or treat bag and of course she was like no. Nope, you may not. Her bag will be whatever she wants it to be and yet it'll probably be overflowing. So mom is going to have a little bitty extra bag to carry around so that she can dump her candy into the, this bag and keep going. And I'll just hold on to this one. And I think it's cute anyway. So there's that. Perfect. All right. And then I'm just going to weed out these little middles. And this is also from Design Space. And something I did bef off camera before I started is the little bitty eyes inside the spiders. There were four of them. I went ahead and weeded those out and just left them that way and then did the rest on camera. But here is three pieces of candy. Now they're kind of tiny. So hopefully I can get all these little candy pieces. One thing I like about glitter iron on well iron on in general is that when you take off the pieces and they're just kind of hanging out you know they're not sticking to you and anything else but you do have to make sure that you don't leave pieces around there's that little candy you don't want to leave them around because they'll end up on your project where you don't want them so i am thinking i might trim down this transfer tape then I can put that on the uh, paper over here as well and just let it all go down together. Okay, there's two. And then we'll do our little third one. We have an orange and a pink and a blue. My daughter decided that she is going to be a Disney princess for Halloween. And one of my teaching friends asked me what I was going to be. And I mean, I got to work that day. And I don't know. I don't want to really dress up a whole lot. <laughs> at school so my brother got married this summer and i had bought a few dresses that are just 
gorgeous. And I actually bought more than one because I couldn't decide what I was going to wear to the wedding. It was out of town. And I bought shoes, the whole nine yards, right? Because I don't really buy that kind of stuff for myself. You know, I don't have a place to wear it, being a teacher and kind of a homebody and a hiker. Like that's, that's me. Anyway, uh, my friend and I decided that I could get a sash and a crown and go like as a, as a high school prom queen. So I'm going to wear one of my really gorgeous dresses that I don't have any occasion to wear. Okay. So we need, let's see, we need a candy over there and I can wear the shoes. I'm going to purchase a crown and a sash that will be so fun okay so all i'm doing is i'm just placing the candy on the sticky part of this transfer tape and that way i can iron all of it at one time let me turn this over and we'll take a look at it actually that looks great so now i'm going to bring this back in and i am going to lint roll this so are you first of all are you going trick-or-treating with any littles or are you going to a Halloween party with adults? That's assuming that you enjoy Halloween festivities because I know not everybody does. Okay, I'm gonna iron this one more time. But let me know down in the comments, like what, if you're doing something, are you going to wear a costume? And if you are, what are you going to wear? Okay, so now I'm going to literally put this smack dab in the middle, nice and easy. And then we're just going to get this ironed on. My family is wanting, well, I say my family, my aunts and all, they're, they're wanting to do like a theme, like we always actually do a theme. They want to do minions. Yeah, I just don't know if I can do minions. I think I'm going to go ahead and do the prom queen thing and my daughter will be her Disney princess. That should be coming anytime now. And um, that will be fun. Okay, I'm just going to let this cool for just a moment. Then before I, un before I peel that off, I actually, I'm going to go ahead and do like I do with all of my um, shirts, is I always just go over the back just for good measure. I flip it over and I just let it cool for a second. And then we peel it off. All right. This is very cool now. Well, it is cool and then it's cool to touch. So there we go. We're going to peel this off. That laid down really nicely. And this one still needs to come up. There we go. But there we go. Look how cute that is. It's super cute, super easy, very inexpensive. Great way to use your scraps. All right. So let's take a look at our pumpkin. Let's see how that's holding up. Okay, let's see how our pumpkin is doing. And I actually did go ahead and I cut out using iron-on the HTV vinyl in black. I did cut out a little sentiment to put on. So I have my heat press going right now. So let's sit here for a second and let's trim off all this excess paper. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing that I did earlier today. I'm going to use my little sanding block just to clean up these edges. And then I do want to go ahead and get the sentiment on. So let's go ahead and take care of both of those things. And I'm basically just going to very lightly go around my pumpkin like that with my sandy block. I think that looks great. And to be honest, I don't know that anyone would really know that I had to do a little paper surgery. So I'm just going to bring this in just out of habit. I don't know that I would really necessarily need it. This SVG, I found this in design space and I'm just going to put that down here in the middle. I think that that looks pretty good. I'm going to just double check here really fast. 
Okay, that seems all right. Okay, I am pretty happy with that. And when I stand it up, it looks pretty good. Let me look at that one more time. Yeah, I think that looks fantastic. Okay, so I've just been heating this on low, which is just one. And I'm just gonna go very gently along the surface. This actually will reactivate the glue as well, but I'm more concerned about the iron-on. And I really like being, I like doing iron-on on wood. It's one of my favorite things to do. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of test that. I'm not sure it's ready, so we'll just keep going. Okay. And then I'm just going to put this down here for a second on the glass mat just to pull out some of that heat. Okay, let's see if we can pull this up. I've got one little bubble here. I think I will. Looks like my little dots are not interested in staying down. So I might just redo my dots which is really good about the mini because I can do some targeted heat, which I really like being able to do. This is one of my favorite purchases. If you are new to Cricut, um, I, I definitely recommend this. This is really awesome. It is very versatile. Um, I have done small projects. I've done little projects. I mean, big projects and small projects with it. Okay gonna let that cool for just a moment. Let me check the pumpkin one more time. Well, I got one little dot. That's okay. I think one little dot, we can sacrifice that one. Okay, that looks great. Oh, I love that. I can always go in with a black marker right here and put a little dot on there. Not bad. Oh, that's fantastic. And really from afar, I mean, you just, you wouldn't know that I had to piece that together. So this is fantastic. All right. Well, let's go ahead, set this aside and finish up our last craft, which I thought wasn't going to happen to begin with. Okay. So for my last craft, now this one, I was not sure was going to happen because of the adhesive vinyl snafu. But when I redid it with iron-on vinyl, it came out great. Just look at the intricacy. So what I want to do is I am simply going to, well, actually, let me tell you about this blank. It's from Hobby Lobby. It's the wood pile, and this is just the rustic hanging plaque. You could totally use this side if you wanted it to be more like a little shadow box or you can use the outside here. There is just a tiny bit. This is a great find. So you can use it on both sides either way. We're gonna see about getting this perfectly lined up. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna kind of double check here on either side that it's pretty close to the same, and it is, it's great, okay? So here we go. We're just going to do the same thing like we did on the last craft. And this is a very sturdy wood blank, so I don't have to put anything underneath it. So you definitely want to make sure you monitor your progress. And what I'm kind of looking for is when I'm sliding the mini over this, you can kind of see the vinyl pull away from the carrier sheet. And it kind of takes on a little bit different, not a different color, but like a, almost like a, like an opacity. Gonna see if this is ready. Yeah, it's a little warm. I'm just gonna let that hang for a minute and cool down before we try and remove this carrier sheet. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and test this and see if this is ready to lift up for us. Wow, that is looking so good. Oh, that is perfect. That looks great. It laid down beautifully. This is fantastic. And then something that I noticed, and I know it's not something I think about all the time, but heating the backside or heating this up allowed this to loosen perfectly. So now the backside is ready to go for 
a whole nother craft. Okay, let me go and get all of the crafts that we've done today so we can check them out and see which one is our favorite. Okay, we have all of the crafts we've done this evening. So first things first, we put the, um, we put the patterned paper on top of our um, pumpkin. This was just a wood pumpkin from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just using the side that was completely flat, and we allowed that to um, completely dry before we did an iron-on, just black HTV, and it's come out really, really well. The other craft that we've done is we did, and I'll just pull this behind here so you can see, we did a little candy jar where this one SVG was all black, but we took some orange and red. So that allowed us to add a little bit of color to our candy jar. Trick or treat bag. This is the mom backup bag. That way any left uh, overflowing treats can just come into here. And it's so cute. And we've got the glitter iron on candy pieces and the black HTV for the rest, and it came out really well. So this is fantastic. Now, these two are Cricut Design Space files, and I can link them down in the description, uh, the project file itself. Then this broom company, along with our pumpkin, these are um, not from... To Cricut Design Space. So I will link the website where I got both of them. But this is our Salem Broom Company. This is the project that almost didn't happen. And I'm so glad that I did decide to try it out with the iron on. So if you have a really intricate, um, if you have really intricate designs like that, a lot of times HTV iron on vinyl is your best bet. I just I think this is probably my favorite for today. I just think it is so fun and I love how it actually turned out compared to not. And then I would say a close second would be this cute little bag with the glitter. I just think it's so fun. That is all for tonight's projects. Hope that you found this video inspiring, informative, and fun to watch. If you did, don't forget, like, subscribe, and share this with your crafty friends. And I will see you soon in the next video. So until then, as always, happy crafting. So much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.